In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the brand new Fitbit Inspire 3. I'm going to be going through an unboxing, showing you the full setup, and we'll be going through the menus as well as the features of this really cool fitness tracker up next. Hey everyone, my name is Jeff and I am getting the chance to check out the Fitbit Inspire 3, Fitbit's latest edition of their fitness trackers. And I did purchase this with my own money uh, to do an unboxing and go through all the features with you. So without further ado, let's show you what comes in the box and get to setting this thing up. So this is uh, just the health fitness tracker. This is not a smart watch. Uh, and as we kind of spin around the box, uh, we can see here this includes a six month Fitbit Premium membership. Uh, this one includes a small and large size band. Uh, and I'll be trying it on here so you can kind of see how it fits on my wrist. Uh, we can kind of see here, move more, stress less. All you have to do is wear it. Uh, this is the Black Case and Midnight Zen Band. Uh, so, basically the all black Inspire 3. Now you can also get the, there's two other color options. There's a pink and black, it's a lilac, bliss and black, or there's a, an orange band in black. Basically all the cases are gonna be black and you get different colored bands. Uh, the orange one is the morning, uh, morning glow and black. So basically your bands, you got black, pink, or orange are your options. Those are available on the Fitbit website. Uh, let's get to unboxing this. Just letting you guys know. So I purchased this Inspire 3 with my own money. This was not sent to me by Fitbit. Uh, I'm going to be doing some reviews as well as more tutorials on this fitness tracker coming in the future. So be sure to subscribe uh, so you don't miss any of those videos. Let's see here. Uh, it just kind of pops out like that. All right. And looks like we have uh, power and style. So... I'm not sure what's the easiest. Ah, there you go. So the tabs on the top allow you to just slide things out. So here is the charger. More of an up close look at uh, where the connectors are gonna go. This has got a regular USB port to charge. All right, now we've got our other band. Let's see if we can pop the tracker out. Okay, let's see if we can peel off the uh, the wrapper. It's like opening a Christmas present. Hey, look at that. All right. So we've got a full color screen, one of the enhancements here for the Inspire 3. And at this point, it's telling me to download the Fitbit mobile app. So what I'm going to do is actually place this on the charger. Not sure how much battery this has, as well as get that Fitbit app installed. Underneath, inside the box, we have our Fitbit product information. Large sheet that unfolds. And then uh, we've got a couple of things on the inside of the box. We've got our quick start guide with our steps. So download the Fitbit app, charge to 100%, sync with the app, and then if we have any issues, uh, essentially we can go to the... Uh, Fitbit website. Uh, it's got learn more here. It also says uh, try turning your phone's Bluetooth on and off uh, to see if that will help any issues. And then over here we've got welcome to the Fitbit family. If I have any questions I can go to myhelp.fitbit.com forward slash go for uh, friendly one-on-one -on -one support. And real quick, as we do in all the videos on this channel, we've hidden Tinker. He's our little hidden robot that looks just like this guy on my shirt. So he's gonna briefly pop up somewhere during this video. Be the first person to spot him and let me know the timestamp. That's the amount of time into this video you spotted him popping up. Let me know that down in the comments section below. And I'll put your name on our Tinker Ford Hall of Fame page as well as give you a shout out in one of my future videos. So looking at the charger as well as the Inspire 3, there's the uh, contacts for charging, but then there's little clips on this charger and there's little grooves on either side of the Inspire 3 that just kind of clips into place. 
You get a little buzz when it's starting charging. And as of right now, I'm at 58% battery. So I'm just gonna let this charge up a little bit. And uh, while we're doing that, let's get the Fitbit app installed. According to this, it's been uh, about 34 minutes and I'm now at 99%. So uh, charging up this from the 58% to the 99% took right around 34 minutes. So you're looking at a little over an hour to fully charge up the Inspire 3. Now Fitbit claims that the battery uh, will last up to 10 days. Not sure on the validity of that. It does, always, uh, does have the always on display feature for this. So I'm sure that will deplete the battery uh, faster than that 10 days. Uh, let's start setting this up. So you're going to want to go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, search for Fitbit. Otherwise, there was a barcode to scan on the packaging, uh, and that'll take you to uh, download the Fitbit app. I've already downloaded that, so I'm going to open. And from this point in the Fitbit app, if you don't have an account, you can click Join Fitbit. Go ahead and put in your information and create a free Fitbit account. Uh, I've already got a Fitbit account, so I am going to go ahead and log in. It has me enter a verification code, which it texted to my phone. And from this point, I am at the Fitbit dashboard. So let's set up our uh, Inspire 3. First, I'm going to tap on the account icon that is in this upper left corner. And from this point, it shows you all your account information. I'm going to set up a device. And it's asking me here, what are you setting up? It lists all different Fitbits. The one that I am setting up is this Inspire 3. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. Now, if you've got a different Fitbit device already connected, it might say, uh, you know, you've already got a different Fitbit device connected. Do you wanna to switch to the Inspire 3? And you can say, yep, switching. In the meantime here, I'm gonna to go to Setup, the uh, Privacy and Fitbit Agreement. So I'm gonna, you can read through that if you want. Uh, it does say that this device is going to track your steps. It also does sleep, skin temperature, and SpO2 tracking. So you're agreeing to uh, them collecting that information. I'm gonna agree. Telling me to charge up my device, I've already done that. And I was able to find the Inspire 3. So it does give me a unique code that's on this device. So I'm gonna type that into my phone to sync it up. From this point, it's pairing the Inspire 3 to my phone. And then it's asking me here if I want to pair with the Inspire 3 on my phone, I'm saying yes. Do I want it to allow access to my contacts and call history? I'm going to check mark that and hit pair. Going through some more pairing and linking. Allow Fitbit to access my Inspire 3. I'm going to click allow. Allow notification access for Fitbit. Fitbit's going to be able to read all my notifications that I get, contact names, photos. I'm going to allow that. And then it's asking me if I want to do the Fitbit protection plan, which covers damage from accidents like drops, spills, things like that. I'm going to do not now. And it's just kind of giving me an overview of some of the things you can do on the Inspire 3. More overview, health metrics dashboard, stress management score you can take, a daily readiness score it'll give you with your premium subscription, sleep stages, and sleep score information. Giving me some instructions on how to change the bands wear it on my wrist, talking about how you change the bands by using the pins, and we'll go through this. There's two buttons on the side that we can use to wake it up. We can swipe to get more info, and you can swipe the other way to go back. Some care tips, and we are all set. From this point, the Inspire 3 is set up on my account. Let's take a quick look. So this is the band that it comes on attached. There is a larger band that comes with the uh, Inspire 3, so you can see the difference in sizes. Changing out bands, now of course I don't have any fingernails, which kind of sucks for trying to switch this out, but there's that little pin that's on the bottom of both sides of your band, and if you want to pop those off, just got to get your finger or some sort of tool underneath that pin to remove it from the tracker. You can see the spot where the new band is gonna get inserted. Easiest to just take one end and insert it in, push your pin down, and then insert the other side. Here's a good overview of the Inspire 3 on my wrist. 
very minimal if you are somebody that doesn't like a larger watch on your wrist not much to this at all uh, very lightweight uh, it's all basically encased in plastic so really don't even notice that it's on my wrist uh, and from this point you can kind of see I'm using the larger band I've got a seven inch diameter wrist and I'm on the fourth uh, the fourth notch in at this point. It does have the watch uh, strap to keep any excess from coming off. So this is the smaller band with the uh, Inspire 3 on my wrist. Uh, you'll notice that there's less excess strap uh, or band under the band strap. I'm at uh, eight holes in on this band so actually both these bands the large and the small will work I probably would wear it with the smaller band just because there's less hanging off on the end let's go ahead and pop both of these bands off fairly easy to do with those pins and then this is the tracker itself with no bands attached now on Fitbit's website you can actually buy a clip that you insert this into so if you don't want to wear it on your wrist but you do want to keep it on your shirt uh, or put it on say your pant line you can get that clip uh, that is right now twenty dollars on fitbit's website all right so i've had the chance to go for a quick walk start putting some data into the inspire 3 and now i want to go through the menus and the overview to show you what uh, you can do to customize it and how you can use it uh, what we're going to start off with first is you can see here this is the uh, tracker face on the Inspire 3 and uh, we can see the time, we can see the date. Now you can actually change this to a different design if you want. If you've got your device uh, that's linked to your Inspire 3 with your Fitbit app open, go to the account icon in the upper left and then from there make sure you choose Inspire 3 in that menu now from this point you'll see gallery you'll see some other options as well and then down below under general there's different areas that you can customize as far as your goals heart rate notifications things like that but to change your tracker face click on gallery and this is going to open up all different types of things that you can do now you'll see at the top it says inspire 3 i can tap on clocks right next to it and these are all different clock designs uh, that I can choose from so if I really like split I can go ahead and tap on that and then it'll give me an option here to hit the install button and then you'll get a little status notification on both your phone device and your Inspire 3 that it's installing that clock face and when the status bar is done that face is installed so you'll get an update complete when the face is installed and now I've installed that face customizing my uh, Inspire 3. I'll just quickly show you all the different options that you have and I don't know if they're going to be adding more to this list but you get a good idea uh, of all the different designs to choose from. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So just over 20 different styles to choose from. You can pick the one you want. You could have a new face every day, I suppose, uh, to customize your tracker. So different watch faces uh, feature different abilities. This one you can tap on and it's showing me it's rotating at the bottom of the screen uh, through different stats. So 15 is my active minutes for the day. Uh, 4,295 is how many steps I've gotten in. It shows my heart rate, uh, which is interesting because there wasn't actually taking any heart rate. That was probably my last heart rate that it had. Uh, how many calories I've burned, uh, the distance that I've walked or gone today while using the Inspire 3, and then we're back to active minutes. So from this point, uh, there's a couple of different options. You can swipe in different directions. If we swipe up on the screen, this gets you to your today stats. And if you ever want to just quickly see what your battery is at, right now it's at 92%. Just from your main screen, swipe up. Uh, also from here, you can see your date, as well as you've got uh, all that same information that the clock face or watch face tracker face was showing you. Uh, but depending on what 
face you've got installed, it may not give you the options to see all this information uh, from that face. So by scrolling up, you can see all this information. It's also going to show you other stats like how many hourly uh, active uh, hours you've been active. So in this instance, it's six. My heart rate, uh, 75 beats per minute resting and 65... Or my heart rate was 75 and then my resting heart rate is 65 beats per minute. Uh, I haven't worn this thing yet overnight, but if you do that, it'll start tracking your sleep. It'll start giving you sleep information. It'll give you a sleep score uh, on how favorable you slept. And again, you can see more stats, more detailed stats on that in the Fitbit app. This is just giving you a quick little overview. The other thing is this will track your blood oxygen level. Uh, my SPO2, again, it's, it's something that is not an on-the-fly reading. It's going to take it overnight. So again, you'll need to wear this uh, to bed overnight, and then the following day, it's going to report to you what your SPO2 uh, reading is. Um, in addition to that, it shows me here exercise one of four as far as different options. And that is it for everything under the uh, Fitbit Today screen. Now to jump back, you can swipe to the right. The other thing I could have done is just squeezed the Inspire. Uh, now by squeezing it now, this is actually the always on display face, which looks just like the other face. Uh, but when I, you can see as I touched it there, it just got a little bit brighter. I can actually turn it off again. So this is the always on display screen. For this particular look, it looks just like a, the watch face just kind of dimmed down a little bit, but uh, you can either press the sides to put it to sleep or wake it up, or you can double tap on the screen. That's also going to wake it up. Uh, and then that gives you options to do whatever you want to do. So the uh, Inspire 3 goes into its uh, sleep mode, but you can see that the always on display is still on to wake it up. You can either just tap the side screens and to put it back to sleep, you can tap them again. You can also double tap this screen and that is essentially going to wake it up. If I swipe to the left uh, on the Inspire 3, you're going to see this would be where any notifications I might have are going to pop up. This is where I can start an exercise. If I want to track my walk, uh, I can just hit the, uh, the button here and you'll see it takes me into the workout. To start it, I'll just tap that start button and it'll use GPS, but it's not built in GPS. It's just connected GPS. It'll track your workout. And then if you want to pause it, you can pause it. You can return to the workout or you can finish. And when you're done, it'll give you all your stat information, active minutes, time, pace, uh, heart rate, all sorts of stuff. You can click on done and that takes you out of that workout. Now, if I swipe up in this exercise menu, I've, I've also got like a run I can track, biking, uh, that was swimming right there. We've got workout, uh, treadmill. So these are just exercise shortcuts. If you want different ones, you can go into the Fitbit app and you can actually edit them. And I'll show you that when we jump back to the app uh, to go back on your device. If you just swipe to the right, that actually takes you back. Um, again, notifications, exercise. You can also do relaxation breathing exercises using the tracker. Uh, this is a two minute session and if you start it up, it's going to walk you through doing some breathing exercises. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you can set an alarm. Uh, you also can set timers or a countdown. So you've got those options from the tracker. Then we come back to the main clock face screen. Now, if you swipe down from the top of the menu, this is where you start going into the different settings to customize more of the tracker. Uh, when I have the thing on my wrist and I am essentially turning it away, it is shutting off the screen. And when I bring it back, it wakes itself back up. That is the auto wake up feature that's on here and you have the option here where you can turn off that auto wake on or off. Right now it's on. 
you also have where you can turn on or off do not disturb mode. So if you turn on do not disturb mode, it's gonna stop things like your notifications so that you're not being bothered by those. Uh, you also have a sleep mode that you can turn on or off. So sleep mode, very similar to do not disturb mode. The uh, difference is gonna be that it's not only gonna stop those notifications, but it's also gonna dim your screen, especially if you've got your screen set to a brighter uh, setting at night, and you may not necessarily want that real bright screen on. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we've got to find your phone button. If I were to tap this, it's gonna make my phone ring. Uh, convenient if you lose your phone somewhere in your house, like in the couch or something, it's, as long as it's within Bluetooth range, uh, it'll ring the phone for you. So you can also choose here whether you want to wear this on your wrist. I was showing where you can pop the uh, bands off and actually just use this in a clip to clip it to your body. So that's where you would change your setting. Uh, this is where you would turn on the water lock. So this is swim proof up to 50 meters. And if you, you're gonna wanna turn the water lock on before you go swimming with it so that the water doesn't activate the screen and start going into all your different settings and things. Uh, to turn it on, you uh, are gonna firmly double tap. So let's double tap here. It's gonna go ahead and lock it. And now from this point, I can't do anything with the screen, uh, just like water flowing on it. But if I firmly double tap again, come on. There we go. That will unlock, uh, take the water lock back off. So let's go back. We're jumping back to where we were. This is the water lock. Still swiping up some more takes me into more settings. So you have everything from display settings, quiet mode. Uh, if you don't want it to track your heart rate, you can turn that on and off. If you don't want your active zone minutes, notification so it'll notify you like if you've hit your active zone minutes you can turn those off uh, you can also turn the button lock on and off so button lock is these buttons on the side that i was pushing if you don't want those to be activated and you just want the touch screen you can turn on that button lock uh, you can adjust things like your vibrations so right now it's set to normal you can change it to strong. Sometimes I don't always feel all the notifications, so having strong is kind of nice. Uh, you can also go here for your device info, and this is where you would restart your device. So if you're ever wondering how you can restart your device, uh, essentially what you could do is if we are at the main menu and you quickly want to restart it, you would swipe down from the top, go all the way to this settings icon, and then swipe up and go all the way down until you see this restart. That is how you can restart your device. Now, if you're ever going to get rid of your Inspire 3 and you wanna reset the device, uh, kinda like restarting, you can swipe down from the top of the screen. You go to this settings icon. Under that settings icon, you would scroll all the way to the bottom. It's gonna say restart device, but just above that, you're gonna to go to where it says device info. And if we click on that under device info, we can see system info, we can see uh, regulatory info, and then down here you can see clear user data. If you clear user data, that is essentially going to reset all the information on the device and then the device is now cleared off, ready for use by somebody else to pair to their phone. So in addition to that, if we jump back to the settings and we go to the display settings, you're gonna notice here that we can change the brightness. Right now it's set to normal, but we can also set it to max or we can set it to dim. Uh, we've got the auto wake, which is turned on. Uh, if you didn't want that turned on, you could set it to off. Uh, right now, for the tutorial purposes, I've got the screen timeout set to long. Uh, you can also set it to default, or you can increase it to medium. And it says here, increasing screen time reduces the battery life. So uh, that up to 10 days of battery, you know, you're probably not going to get that if you have this set to something uh, more like long. I like long for using it for tutorial purposes because it does keep the screen illuminated longer. Uh, same thing, you can turn on the always on display under display settings and the always on display, 
is what I was showing you before. Again, that is going to affect the battery life, but if you like always having a clock available, you're gonna to wanna to have that always on, turned on. Something that's kind of cool about this is there are off hours where it'll actually turn that auto uh, always on screen off uh, for an interval of, right now it's set to 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. because it feels that's when I'm gonna be sleeping, so I won't need that always on feature. Uh, you can change this interval by just tapping on it and you'll see start and end. You can tap on that to edit it. To go back, you would just swipe to the right. Take a second right now and smash that like button. If you're getting some value out of this video, if you're learning something, I greatly appreciate it. So I wanna show you the Fitbit companion app on your phone or device. Uh, and this is where you're gonna get all that same information from your tracker. You can sync this up on an instant to your tracker by just uh, kind of swiping down and you'll see uh, release to refresh. And right now it's going through the syncing process on my Inspire. It's also showing me what the battery status is. Now underneath that, there's different uh, areas you can go into, track your mindfulness. Uh, chart's got a new look, navigate with ease, explore your data. So you can go in here and there's all sorts of different things, mindfulness or mindful sessions. Uh, you've got all sorts of different, these are so three minutes, five minutes, two minutes. You can click on some of these and these are uh, different. Says here, take the first step to mindfulness sessions that help you learn the basics of meditation. So you have all these options available to you. Uh, you'll see here that these are premium and then it gives you a couple here that are not premium just for you to try out. If we jump back out of mindfulness, this will also manage your stress. Uh, learn how your body responds to stress. It's going to give you more information and data and it's actually going to measure your stress from day to day. You also can go in and tell it yourself how you're feeling. So how are you feeling today? Right now I'm feeling calm, so I'm gonna log that reflection. Uh, it's going to keep a log and you get more data the more you wear the device uh, and the more you log on it. Now I've just opened the thing up so clearly there's no data that it's gonna give me, but it does also give me uh, some different uh, information here. Uh, it's going to go through different stress readings that some of my other Fitbit devices have previously given me. Now, it'll also give you your sleep score and sleep information. This is your sleep profile. Wear your Fitbit device for at least 14 nights to get enough data for a sleep profile. Uh, after that, it'll start, the more sleep you log, then the more precise your sleep profile will reflect your recent sleep patterns. So it's gonna track your sleep and uh, give you a sleep score. And you know you get a higher score if you slept better or if you're getting more consistent sleep. Uh, and uh, you can see here previously, uh, this is not from this device, but other Fitbit devices that also track my sleep. You can see like I'll have a fair score, 69, fair score, 76. Uh, and you can actually tap on this information and it'll actually go into details. Yep, thank you for telling me that I've got a, a fair, uh, good, poor, excellent. It's actually kind of showing you what the, the scores mean. And then C-score, you can go in and actually see stuff like your time of sleep, your deep in REM, and your restoration. So you can also see things like your health metrics and you can view your trends. So everything here as far as breathing rate, heart rate, uh, it'll measure variations in your skin temperature, uh, your SpO2 and your resting heart rate. Now, if we click on something like skin temperature, it, it hasn't been something that I've been wearing. So it really doesn't have any data that it can go off of. Uh, but it'll show me variations in my nightly skin temperature over the past week as I would be wearing this device. Same thing with your breathing. So breathing rate, I could go in and again, it'll show as it starts tracking, the more you wear it, the more data it will be able to gather. And then you get a daily readiness. Now I believe this is only something that is going to be with Fitbit Premium but your daily readiness score uses data tracked by your device. 
your heart rate, your sleep, all that activity information, and tells you, gives you a score, kind of like that sleep score of how it feels you think you are doing. So I'm gonna click on agree. It says here, get your first score after wearing your Fitbit device for four days and nights. Over the first 14 days, Fitbit tunes your score by learning how your body responds to exercise and recovery. So that information will start populating in here as you're wearing the device. It also shows you here how many days of exercise you've gotten. Uh, I went for a walk earlier, so uh, I can click on this. It's actually going to give me information on my walk. Uh, you can track weight. You can also track your water consumption. Uh, and you can log your food in the app as well. Something else you can do to add more customization to your Inspire 3 is go to your account icon and then under your account, go to your Inspire 3. You've got an area that'll tell you how to use things. You can also see accessories available for it. Uh, but if you click on this gallery, this is where we were before we were looking at the different clocks. Um, you can also see the different apps that are currently installed on your tracker. Uh, things like your notifications, exercise, relax, alarms, uh, your SPO2. If you go back to this, this is kind of your main Inspire 3 dashboard. Uh, you can go to notifications and select your notifications options. So if you want notifications about phone calls, text messages, calendar events, emails, uh, you can turn those on or off. Um, you also can set up quick replies, which is kind of cool. So if you go to quick replies here, uh, it says customize reply choices. So once it populates here, uh, I could go to say messages and under messages, as far as quick replies, I've got yes, no, sounds good. Can't talk now, we'll reply later, what's up? Uh, I can change these. So if I didn't want to say what's up and I wanted to say something else, I can go in there and make my own custom replies, which is pretty cool. Uh, in addition to that, so there's more options here under notifications, but if we back up, um, you can also do things like your high and low heart rate. You can turn on different settings for that. Uh, reminders to move. If you want reminders to move, you can turn those on and you can set what times you want those. You can set your main goal. So right now it's set to steps, but you could choose distance, calories, active zone minutes, just depending on what you want. Your wrist placement and then exercise shortcuts. So if we go into here, we were seeing these when we were swiping through the tracker. Uh, you can reorder these however you want. So if you're a runner like I am, you can just drag uh, these lines and now run will be the first item that's going to show up on my list so I don't have to keep scrolling through things to start a workout for my runs. So I'm interested to know what are your thoughts on the Fitbit Inspire 3? Let me know down in the comments section below. And I've reviewed all of Fitbit's other products, their Versa, their Sense. In fact, they've got their new Sense 2 and Versa 4 that are gonna be coming out. And I've got both of those on pre-order. So as soon as those get here, I hope to be doing a whole series of videos on those devices as well. So if you aren't yet subscribed, take a second right now, subscribe so that you get notified when those new videos drop. My name is Jeff and as always, I appreciate you watching. Be sure to make every day awesome and I will see you in the next video.